You are now listening to the Two Shots Podcast, a part of the Shotgun Sports Network with your host, Gary Fitzgerald. We are bringing you interviews from around the shotgun game and covering the sport from a different perspective. Behind the scenes, beyond the shoot, and before you hear it at the club, you will hear it here first. If you want candid, unedited, unhinged, and truthful interviews, you are in the right place. Visit us online at twoshotspod.com and check us out on social media recorded here hey thanks everybody for joining us here at two shots podcast there's my announcer voice that's really cool this is brought to you by shotgun gear trap rentals trap rentals uh for all your promatic needs call cyrus alexander and we're not professional enough to have his number so you got facebook or google look the shit up shotgun gear trap rentals <laughs> <laughs> well done gary nice that was pretty good. did you have to practice that one no it's just alcohol but uh don't don't push the red button, Skinner. Yeah. Yeah, I'll leave the cord plugged in, Gary. All right, everybody. So we brought to you another episode of this fucking dumpster fire known as Two Shots Podcast. Um, uh, with us, as always, Aaron Romberg, not present in the studio. Energy up. <laughs> say, say hello. Say hello, Aaron. Hello, folks. Aaron got the airborne AIDS and was unable to be in the studio this weekend. True story. So I'm calling in remotely from the underground there. Remotely. And, and G-Dub is with the birth giver, so he's not on with us running the uh, the engineering part of this because it's been a clusterfuck for the last 10 minutes. Yeah, we can definitely tell that G-Dub is not there because things are coming unplugged. People are pushing red buttons. <laughs> There's <laughs> Problem. But uh, but but more importantly, the star of the show, the cr- the jewel of this crown, this you know whatever the whatever, we have Desiree Edmonds from Savannah, Georgia. How are you, Desi? Oh, thank Hi, you. Good. <laughs> I'm uh, here in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, uh, some people have a life. No, I, I figured we need to. Uh, I'm not assuming your gender, um, so we can be politically correct, just so we don't get banned for hate speech. But you know, you do identify as female, correct? She, woman, female. What are your pronouns? girl? What are your pronouns? <laughs> I, me, mine. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to quote uh, Jack Flesher as Gary uh, appeals to the lowest common denominator. And thank you, Jack Flesher from California on that one. Uh, <laughs> he got mentioned. He's happy. But anyway, so once again, Two Shots Podcast, we're not doing origin stories on anybody. Um, we are kind of coming to it from an obviously different perspective. Probably I'm already getting tired of hearing that shit. But anyway, we are. Everybody knows Desi. Um, if you don't know Desi, well, I'm sorry, can't help you there. But um, <laughs> we know your story. We know who you shoot for. You know, for the most part, we know we how you got here. You drove Zach Road. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> But anyway, he's upset now. But, uh, <laughs> just, just. <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> these are the <laughs> these are the jokes, folks. Here we go. Um, but we know we know everything. We know everything up to the point. And I don't know if we've ever gotten into the other side of the female aspect of being a shooter. We've we've showed the kids and stuff like that. But I just want to talk to you a little bit, you know, about what it's like to be a lady shooter. Um, You are, and I don't know, whatever you're, you know, you, you do your concurrent, but you are more than your concurrent. You know, you shoot so well. Can you tell us a little bit about what obstacles and what opportunities you feel being a lady shooter brings to the game um yeah i mean i think a lot of women get that in shooting and most of the time it it really doesn't bother me and i don't think it bothers you know a lot of women especially when you're first starting because you want the information and the help is not necessarily a negative but you know just like in anything guys tend to think a little too highly of themselves sometimes 
okay and uh they like the, overstep the bounds on the help and it's you know, it's a little bit sexist in my mind. It's like, well, you wouldn't go do that with any of your other buddies or a guy that you didn't know on the course. I mean, maybe some of them would, but you wouldn't do that with another guy. So why would you, you know, get up in, sometimes they'll like get up into the box and there's, and it's a person you're just squatted with. They're standing right behind you, hovering over your shoulder. And it's like, have you ever heard of personal boundaries and space? And, you know, and from a shooter standpoint or an instructor standpoint, I guess, you know, sometimes failure is the best teaching tool, um, trial and error, especially with clay targets. I think, I think, you know, when you're first starting just trial and error, you learn a lot about how to fix and what to change and what you did wrong. And obviously that it didn't work and, you know, and just kind of process of elimination on things. And when you have someone standing behind you, always just like, you know, trying to help and tell you what to do before you even get in the box it's frustrating and sometimes you shoot worse because of it yeah because you can't you can't focus on what you're doing but uh, i can agree with that <clears throat> when you used to be a woman was that happen to you a lot skinner yeah when i changed when i changed when i had my change uh, a few years back <laughs> his identity i can't identify now when he went from Aaron to Aaron, <laughs> see what I did. There. I, I, spelled, I, spelled, I used to spell it with an E. Now I spell it with an A. But uh, no, I get what you're saying. I mean, I watch it all the time. It's like, you know, you see it with kids, you see it with women. And it's like, and you don't know whether it's like how much of it is like I genuinely want to help this person, woman or child, or how much of it I just want to stroke my fucking ego by like, oh, <laughs> here, look at me. I shot this, and let me show you how to do this, little missy. So Right. I mean, I think most of it is, you know, genuine, and, and it's there's good intentions behind it. Um, but it it still can be – it can be frustrating. Um I mean, even even to this day, as a professional shooter, like I'm not going to stand behind someone and coach them through a round. One, I think that, you know, coaching is, that's not the time and place for it. The, the sporting clays round is like the test. You know, you practice and you get your coaching before the test. So that's not the time or place to be really helping someone. And even... If I know that they're inexperienced and I can help them, it's important for them to, you know, again, trial and error to, to, they have to fail in order to figure out how to do it successfully. Now, if, you know, someone's in the box and they've missed the same target four times in a row and on their fifth pair, they still have, you know, I'm going to let them know that they're either in front or behind. I'm going to give them some kind of information, but I think, but I think, you know, obviously with women, but in general, um, it, it, the, you know, the tournament course is not the place to, to be helping people. Yeah. It, it, don't you think Skinner, like you're out there and you got some guy giving a lesson, whether it's a, a warranted lesson or just the guy's trying to coach for some reason, you're just like, dude, shut up. Can we just shoot? You know, what do you think about that? Right. Skinner? Correct. No, I, I agree hundred percent on that. And, you know, I mean, you know, tournament's not the time for that. One hundred percent. I mean, there's rules against it, but I mean, like, yeah, Desi said, you know, the the the, the tournament or the the round is the test, and the only time you cheat on that test is in a porta potty, not in the cage. So. <laughs> 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 the multiple uses of porta potties. Yes, it's a very useful tool. I mean, if we want to, you know, if we want to cut down on cheating in the NSCA, let's just like. Sorry, there's no porta potties here, sir. You know, no, you know. no bathrooms. <laughs> no bathroom. He's, uh, you know, but uh, I could um, tell you some stories, but I just there's, you know, it's just like what line do you want to cross with this show? Because you've already made some comments, and I'm trying not to like really lowbrow this thing too much, so we'll just leave it there. Um, so you've achieved a lot. You're, you know, I mean, you kick everybody's ass, and it's great. And it's, it's, you know, but what do you feel? Have you ever noticed the backhanded comments you get? Kind of like, you know, that a girl type shit that ever piss you off? Um, you know, I, I really don't put, um, that much thought into what people think of me, to be honest you with do, you. You do now. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> um, right. And, uh, I mean, it, I, 
it doesn't ever really bother me. I've Good. never come across that. I think um, more of what my, I might get angry over is just kind of um, maybe people overlooking or underrating kind of my experience a little bit. And whether I beat you or not, um, you know, experience can't be bought in this game. Um, it it nope. just comes from time. And and doing it year after year after year and going to a different gun clubs and shooting different targets. And sometimes I do get a little bit frustrated um, when I'm trying to, you know, make a point or add an opinion on, you know, an event or a course or whatnot. And I'll, I feel like sometimes my opinions are a little bit overlooked um, because I'm a woman or because I'm younger. Um, I think sometimes age has something to do with it and not just because I'm female, but that does, you know, frustrate me at times, you know, but in the same note, I have to remind myself but that, you know, I am young and a lot of these people have been doing it a lot longer. So well, just yeah. got to keep going out there year after year and take as much as you can from it. Well, I mean, that's, that's a good point. I mean, the, the, the thing that I kind of, um, it what's kind of neat about you and a lot of these girls that shoot is, you know, most women are not competitive. Um, right. You know, that's why they have the little, I don't call it social club, but like social shooting circle of the whatever. And, the, and the, it's the girls that don't shoot the competitions. But it's really neat. Like I said, it's like it's 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 different knowing the psychological. You know. First of all, I'm not going to say I understand the mind of a woman. So just 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 put that <laughs> down there really quick because you can look Thank at my. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> you know, the fail, the amount, the, 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 the previous failed marriages and then stuff like that. You know, yeah, okay, Gary, I'm not going to say it. But anyway, going forward to that one, it does separate you, though. The, from a lot of girls that you and Grace and and these girls have this drive to shoot and to gut it out. That's cool. You know, that's different, yeah. isn't it? You know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think that's what makes, you know, the females who do compete. I think that, you know, is what makes them quote unquote special, I guess, is it's the competition side of things. And no matter the obstacles or, you know, that, um, obviously there's not a lot of women in competitive shooting. They, they want to be there because they are competitive. Um, and I love that. I mean, I love competing um, in anything. I mean, I love sports in general. So, um, oh, I think it, I think it makes the sport better and I think it makes, you know, the females better for it. That's, that's cool. And that's, that's right. I mean, that's, that's one something. That's one point that a lot of people want something. That's, you know, guys that don't understand that it was like back off of her giving these fucking lessons or giving these, you know, all those tidbits of information is like that girl, if she's out there shooting that tournament, she's just as competitive or more than you because she has to deal with your shit, you know, for the right. most part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's her really wants to do because she's shooting her with your fat ass. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I did not imagine like my most fun day to be outside around a bunch of middle-aged white men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could, I could pick I could pick a better place to be doing that, but obviously she wants to be there and she wants to shoot. So give her some space and let her do her thing. Yeah, I mean nothing says a girl's dream with like you know hanging out with a bunch of old retired guys with short shorts on, their nuts hanging out. <laughs> Come on, man! I mean, she's not there for the scenery. It's like, dear yeah. God, man, did you have to wear boxers today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just, we just lost the 70 and older crown on this show right now. But they checked their nuts right too, right before they, right before they got mad with each other hanging out there. Sorry. I felt, I thought I felt a breeze. Oh, God. <laughs> and this will be on air. This will not be edited out. Oh, God. Barker's normally like, Gary, is there anything we should take out? And it's been so long <laughs> since we've, re you know, recorded it. I'm like, nah, sounds good. Fuck it, go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. oh. oh, God, that's so great. Improving, improving the sport, one longer pair of shorts set it. <laughs> well, I thought PTS had rules about long short, short shorts. Yeah, but not long oh, balls. So speaking of, yeah, speaking <laughs> of females and shooting, right? Oh. Um, one obstacle that it always comes into play is a tire, okay? <laughs> Oh, this, right? The shorts are too short. The skirt, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so PTAS does have this shorts rule. Yes, they that do. Aaron speaks of. That rule actually originated...
because the guys decided to air everything out. Uh huh. That's right. Frenchman. During ceremony, yes, the ceremonies. It was not. No one in their right mind was complaining about any of the females having too short of shorts. Okay. No. And if you are complaining, I don't. <laughs> You might have you, you, you might. got some problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it's just like yeah. <laughs> I mean we just we're having a discussion on this. This is where we're at. <laughs> it's gone it, at the eighteen minute mark. We are now <laughs> and we've gone downhill. We have we're in the basement. But uh, yeah, it is it is true. You know, it's just like goddamn man. You know, I mean that's what that's what Hemingway. I mean, second his balls hit, hit the toilet water, he's over. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so so moving on um i mean you guys and this is our plug for winchester you're involved with the shell industry and all of us you know for the most part this game is a disposable income for the vast majority of people who have other jobs so you use your discretionary income to do this current situation seven percent inflation Rising shell costs, right? Rising everything costs. Um, Des, where is this game going in your opinion? Well, in five to ten years, what's this game going to look like? Oh, Just I don't know. Opinion. I wish I knew. Just your yeah, opinion. I wish I knew. Um, I have to, you know, because it is a sport that I love. I have to believe that um, it's gonna, it's going in a good direction. Um, I have to believe that it is growing. I mean, the numbers don't lie. So I feel like anytime you get more participation in a sport, um, you know, it can hopefully and breed success. Um, you know, the more people that know about clay targets and the more people that do it, uh, the more people that get involved with it and the more people that get involved, the more money, the more opportunities, the more venues, um, I think, um, you know, gun clubs have worked their asses off to create venues and experiences, even for the recreational shooter to come out on a regular basis and participate. Um, I, so I think as long as the gun clubs, um, continue to, do what they're doing which is i mean working working their butts off i i think it it will be successful i mean how much bigger are the events going to get i don't know how much more money is going to be in the sport i don't know i hope more i mean the more people that participate ideally the more money you know that gets involved but i noticed and it might just be you know because of what i'm surrounded with now that i'm here in savannah but a lot more participation in uh, the youth um, and not just once or twice. I mean, these kids are doing, sh you know, shooting for their main sport. I mean, that's what they're doing as kids and they're wanting, going, wanting to go to college for it, um, which I think is great. Well, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that is true. I mean, the, obviously the youth, youth is, the, I mean, everybody says youth is the future, but I think the youth is kind of the current present. Um, Skinner, before we get on to something I want to ask you about, you know, the, the, the rising cost of the game, what have you seen across the board on the local level? Of uh, I, I, mean, I don't see a lot of youth shooters doing a lot of shoots. Um, or the ones I have seen, um, they go to shoots and, you know, they get to the senior year or whatever, and they kind of disappear. Just a few short years that I've been in, in – in and around all this certain, certain areas it's big and certain areas it's not and it could be because like what we're talking about right now economic structure economic resources yeah uh, you know certain, definitely per, certain people i mean we have seen from our you know i watched the numbers on illinois pretty good and midwest we are down um but we are you know if you look at the average median um, income levels. I have a feeling that Savannah's probably got a little bit more money. Houston's got a little bit more money. More people and more money. Our area, you know, you have a less of an average. You know, your income's a little less. We are down. 
you know, as right. a whole for the state. Uh, Brett's have pretty good, but then again, Chicago's got more money than downstate Illinois. Um, yeah, you're just pulling from a bigger market. Pulling um, from a bigger market, more money. And um, Yeah, and, and even, you know, even, you know, if there's not higher median income, the venue, the opportunity of venue is much easier to get to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're not spending as much money to go to the club as you would, you know, if you have to drive three and a half hours or whatever. Right. It is. Well, I mean, uh, and you shot in England. I've shot in England, shot in Europe. We know what shells cost over there. Um, yeah. We're going that way. Do you, I mean, Americans, Americans have a, for guys that don't travel and haven't shot outside the United States, Americans have an attitude of, we're going to go to a shoot and we're going to melt a shotgun down. And mm-hmm. I need to have every possible fucking event I can to shoot. Because if I haven't shot 300 rounds today, I don't feel like I'm a shooter. Yeah. You know, how many little 50 bird sporting clay shoots have you seen in England and stuff? You know, you don't shoot a big 100 bird race every damn time, or you don't shoot that much feet. You know, I mean, world feet tasks, those guys bang 50 targets and they go home, you know. So, maybe, yeah, or you know, you well, they should they might shoot a lot in one day. So, in England, I mean, it's obviously, you know, in terms of uh, travel, it's a lot easier to get from place to place. So, they might shoot three, you know, 300 rounds in a day, but they do it at three different gun clubs. Yeah. They shoot a hundred at one gun club and then they drive to the next one and shoot a hundred there and drive to the next one. So the gun club isn't um, pressured into throwing all of these events. They throw a quality hundred bird event and then the shooter just goes from place to place. Yeah. yeah. Obviously I mean, it's easier with travel and whatnot, but and they're, um, and they're paying 10, but 10, 12 bucks a box, you know, they're right. paying more than we are paying. I mean, like I said, the cost is there. The cost, our shells, you know, I mean, Romberg's been in this in a short time. Desi, how long have you been at it? 15 years now? Yeah, 15, 16. Yeah, 15, I forget 16. how old I am sometimes. You know, shot uh, 31. Um, uh, sh- shotgun <laughs> shells have not gone up as much <clears throat> as you think. I mean, when, when Zach and I were kids, this was back when, you know, I mean, we a long time ago. Um, color TV was a new thing, and... Um, so on and so forth we both watched the first moon landing it was awesome and anyway um you know you're paying in the 30s for double a's right i mean that was kind of common i mean you got a good deal you got them in the 20s you know but but for the average guys he's paying 30 something so you know you go an inflation calculator it should be a lot higher than it than than it is Mm -hmm. You know, right. so, I mean, I don't know. Things are going to have to adapt. And, 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 you know, I, of course, we're making a switch here at our club, aren't we, Romberg? I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> Skinner wanted an auto, auto Halise ring, Desi. So we have an auto Halise ring now. So. Oh, good for, you should have one. Yeah, right. You know, All right. But, I mean, All what, right. what do you think, Skinner? No, I, I, I kind of like the idea of it. I mean, you got sporting clays, uh, you got wobble, you got P test, you got flyers, you got, uh, you name it, you shoot it. You got an all around club that can go and shoot any discipline with a shotgun. Except for skeets. We don't have no Except skeets. For skeets. Oh, <clears throat> but <laughs> thank God for that. But no, I mean, it's, it, I, mean, I wanted, I wanted to shoot more police um, and having an auto machine just to speed the process up a little bit. Well, and, yeah. Not and having to get help. kids. Not having to get kids. That's the main thing is, right. is not having to get the kids. Yeah, kids don't want to work these days. No, that's the biggest problem <laughs> is getting kids to show up. You know, if we're running a sporting clay shoot, I think we're, besides Brett, um, we're like the only um, uh, outside of uh, Northbrook, obviously, that that has um, fee task on a monthly tournament. We normally throw, what, 75 targets. And, you know, you that that's you got a couple kids running the parkours, and then, well, we stopped throwing Halise that much because – 
you would have to stop and piss somebody off because he didn't have somebody to shoot, you know, fee test. So, you know, mm-hmm. the, the autos are nice on that part. Um, and we got us, uh, we're building a nice, uh, well, we're also having the FLC all around coming up in 2022, which our biggest complaint on last year's all around was no one wanted to leave because like, like Skinner says, there's, there's enough here to shoot. Why did we have to leave? And there's a bar. So, um, we're doing the FLC all around this year and it's going to be every event that we, every discipline we have at FLC and we shoot it here and we never leave and we have a super final this year. And I don't know, Skinner, should I, I can't keep the secret. I know you can't keep your mouth shut. I cannot keep my mouth shut about this man. Cause it's just like, ah, you know, I mean that one time we killed that hooker. I've never told anybody that we killed that hook. <laughs> hey, really? <laughs> Thanks, pal. Oh, boy. I remember, it, Desi, it was a great moment, bonding experience. And I'm like, I'm like, just get her legs in the shovel. And Skinner was crying. And I'm like, come you on, guys man. Are brother, you know? Brothers for life. <laughs> bonding but <laughs> i'm like it's cinnamon's not even a real name don't worry about it but uh, oh, anyway. Serious, but... <laughs> anyway uh off the record the grave off the record very so big. yeah said, off the record the grave wasn't very big because you know it was mid yet yeah you know it. <laughs> that's why he likes it doesn't have to dig as much <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> oh dear lord um so anyway Going back to transition, we're going to do a super final. And we're going to have a Colin Bear super final. And I've already got the guy booked to, to fly up to throw Colin Bear. And it's going to be the top six six guys shoot for Colin Bear. Each bird's worth five. So it's just, it's just why not, right? I mean, why not? Just, let's just do it as extreme and crazy as we possibly can. And last That's year, been FLC's motto since day one, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, it's hold my beer. <laughs> Let's watch hold, this shit. Hold my why beer. not hold my beer and watch this? We blew a mailbox up this year at 4th of July, or last year at 4th of July. I'm surprised yeah. that it was limited to the mailbox. We blew a mailbox. Oh, no, yeah. It was... Who did that? Yeah. I don't remember. I think it was Leifer. But... No, no, it was you. <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> Leifer still watches that video when he's having a bad day. <laughs> the door just does So we had these big, giant, overkill mortars. And Dub kept wanting to light one off. And I'm like, dude, that thing will kill you, dude. Let's just le- let it to the two guys that are drinking to put them out, put it to light them off, you know, safety first. I still have all my fingers and toes. Yeah, right. And I, so I said, fuck it. I want to show them how powerful it is. We stick it in that big mailbox out front. And then we're we're like you know filming it, and the door goes poop, and you're like oh wah wah wah, you know, and it's the door pops up, and then the, the mailbox goes off and flattens it, like flattens the mailbox, blows the the post in half. <laughs> you know, it's like happy Fourth of July, everybody. But okay, we got sidetracked. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this. You know, a good, honest podcast. You and I, back for everything that's gone on recently in my life, I actually shot a little bit. Um, we were all part of the PSCA, the the social experiment known as the PSCA. I believe Romberg actually got in on the one down there at, uh, at uh, gosh darn it, where's it at? Uh, Brass Pro? You and I Brass shot Pro. together, didn't we? Uh, yes. Yeah, so PSCA, Great Social Experiment, went how many years? Four years, Desi? Yes. You know, and then it just quit, you know, just, just kind of imploded. Um, And I'm going to have Scott in here, and, and by no means am I taking any sides on this. Um, But we all have to be honest with ourselves. What, what, why, why did we fuck up? Where did it fail? Um, I, I think, I think the business plan just, uh, it didn't pan out. I don't think it was because, you know, the format of what we were shooting or how many people were shooting or how few people were shooting. I think, uh, the money was there. I think it was just spent in the wrong direction, um, from a business plan. 
and a lot of money went into uh, filming production. Yeah. And no matter how hard you try or how much money you throw at that, shooting does not show well on film. It just doesn't. It is a in-person sport. That's one reason I also do. I mean, I like it. you got to be there to experience it. Correct. Correct. Um, and, you know, I hope it becomes more spectator friendly in person, but it just doesn't show well on TV. So I, I think I think, unfortunately, um, that was just kind of learned the hard way. Well, I mean, it was a uh, we use a antiquated, you know, form of media, a TV show, which is not what we do anymore. Um, Facebook's free. You know, you had more people watching Facebook live streams than we did the the show. Um, That's the only way you can watch it. That's yeah. the only way I can watch it. Um, Just through social media. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, yeah, because you didn't have the, the all the special channels to watch it. Um, what about? I mean, y'all, we all watch TV, and, and, and we all watch TV. You know, we're not Amish. <laughs> and then we just lost the Amish boat. <laughs> 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 fucking, fucking Ezekiel out there with a hand crank. I, I don't think Ezekiel iPod. was on here to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I, I think he's out there with a hand cranked uh, your radio. Here, listen there, you know. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, buttercup. Yeah, right. Uh, no, I mean, there's reasons we watch shows. You know, I mean, let's be honest with you. I don't know what Desi watches. I know that, um, you know, Romberg watches a lot of Yellowstone. Um, what do you watch, Des? Uh, I watch sports. I'm actually currently watching football right now. And why? Um, I am a competitive person and it's, um, it's kind of, it's action. It's human, human action for the sport. It's entertaining to me. Um, but, but you know the players though, you know who the players are. That's what I was getting to. I mean, on a professional level, these players are, they're not just players. They obviously they're people and they have, you know, character and and you see that in their play and their franchises. And it's more than just the one person. Um, But it's entertaining. It comes across well off on TV. I mean, it's like, uh, I think of when all the Rona happened, like watching cornhole on ESPN. So ESPN <laughs> was airing cornhole championships. Okay. I was, I was watching that the other day. To be honest with you. So, so in, in your mind, you think, you think, how, how could, uh, how could ESPN air cornhole and it be more successful or intriguing to watch than shooting sporting clays, which is, you know, shooting sporting clays is awesome. And I think the other part about it on TV is the viewer, even if they don't participate in the sport, they can understand the rules and the difficulty level. Um, They can understand how easy or hard something is, um, success or failure right away. Where with shooting, that's very hard to relay. You don't know, you know, until you experience it, it's very, um, it's a big challenge to, you know, prove to someone or show someone, okay, this target is hard. Well, why is it hard? You know? Yeah. Oh, well, it's going really fast. Okay. Well, what does that mean? You know, or it's really far. Okay. Well, what does that mean? You know, I think it, a lot of people just don't have a knowledge of ballistics and guns in general. So you're already on an uphill battle with that. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And then you got, like I said, that you got the, you got your, uh, your connection to the characters and there was never no characters. I mean, it's scary. I mean, you watch, you watch Yellowstone and you know what characters you like, you know, and you're looking for that character. Am I wrong? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I do watch that with anything, drag racing, anything. baseball, anything, bowling, um, bowling. Did you say bowling? bowling? See, and the other thing that uh, all of the, all of these things have in common too, just like two shots, is you can partake in libations while doing it. That is a fact. That is a fact. I mean, it's it's yeah. I, yeah. The whole thing is if we could get past the 
obviously trying to televise shooting, which is, I, I assume, there's not enough money in the game to, to, to put the resources in there to getting the good shots or whatever you want to call it. But the reality of it is, is like it was we never built any type of following of who they were wanting to see. You know, right. no one was ever mic'd up. There was never any, and it had to be condensed into this, was it 21 minutes? That's what a show is, right? 21, 22 minutes without commercials? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Dear Lord. I mean, you can't get anything done, um, you know, in that period of time as far as developing someone they're rooting for. And you got to have yeah, a villain. Yeah, I mean. And, you got to have a villain, too, you know. Yeah, and then with all the stuff um, with streaming and YouTube channels and stuff like that, I mean, obviously, I think that's come a long way just from when PSCA ended to now. Um, but starting more of a grassroots type effort where you can build up the characters and get the audience to know them more and pick who they like or who they don't like. And you're not spending all of the funds on, you know, filming and, and, you know, getting it out to the viewers. And then you can start to introduce, you know, more of the shooting aspect of it visually. Um, but it, it takes time for people to, you know, I don't watch one episode of a show and go, oh my gosh, I love it. This or, oh, this is the character I like, or this is the one I don't like. So to your point, in that sort of an episode, it just doesn't work. And truthfully, two years is really not that long um, for the viewers to get to know shooters, pro professional or otherwise, or just about shooting in general. No, um, yeah, there are still people that I ask, like, what's the, you know, you, you like you said, how many times you've been on a, and even, you know, Romberg, you know, we're going to shoot. Well, where are you guys going? We're going to shoot. Well, what do you shoot? Well, we shoot clay targets, you know. Oh, what's that? <laughs> like trap? Of course, normally Skinner, Skinner and I are going to fucking pigeon right. shoot. You know, it's like, oh, what are you going to do? I would shoot pigeons. But, yeah, I mean, you got to finish it out. you got to see where the show ends because, I mean, it's not like a porno. I mean, you really don't give a <laughs> shit if her, her, her TV gets fixed. I mean, it kind of is. You, you know? get the money shot at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but did she, did, did, did the TV gotta, ever got fixed? You gotta go through the whole experience. You know, I, I want to know. I mean, what the hell happened? Did, did, did I mean the plumber came over? Is the, you know, is, is the pipe still? You know, is the sink still not draining? What what happened here? You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh my lord! I, I you know, what? I'm, you know, I'm very proud of this show. We do have an explicit rating with um, Apple. So I am just basically like NWA. <laughs> yeah. Straight out of straight out of Whitehall. Straight out of Green County. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So that was what rap was before Drake back in the day when Zach and I were kids, Desi. Yeah. <laughs> With, when y'all had Drake, color TV. Drake Drake is the browning shotgun of rappers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, now that's funny. Wow. Oh well. So so, oh. so, so all right. We oh, fucked. We, we talked about how PSCA and what happened. It was fun. I really got the shirts are really I, nice. So yeah, I will say one thing though. Positive. I I mean I think it did reach um new markets, and I think it did reach a lot of viewers that. Um, fell in love or learned about shooting more than if it wasn't there. I have people um, come up to me all the time, and I think it's like for YouTube, or I can't remember where they're seeing them, but you know, people that wouldn't normally be at a competitive shoe or yeah. be shooting sporting clays if they hadn't seen it. So, on a positive note, I mean, it did reach a lot of people, and. And it was it was fun to me to shoot under the lights. I, I as I a shooter it. experiencing it yeah, I mean, and doing it, I really loved it. And I loved the speed rounds and the excitement of it. And it was a very fast paced game, um, shooting sporting clays, or you know, or that type of format, which it, it is awesome to me. I mean, I love sporting, but it's definitely a slower paced game where, um, like that or pigeons or police, it you know, it speeds up a little bit and. I think That's it's right. fun. That's right. What were you saying, Skinner? No, I was just going to say two things. One, it was watching everybody shoot at night up in the grandstands and just everybody sitting around and BSing and side bets and stuff like that. Um, 
going on it was just neat to watch. The other part was, I don't know if it was PSCA that did it, but some of the youth programs that they had during the day, um, I remember being down in that big open area and they had, you know, <laughs> archery stuff going on. Uh, they had some pellet gun stuff going on. Um, the Skinner had a great day at the carnival. <laughs> oh my God. Do you know this story, Des? Do you know this story? I I don't know what story you're you know. So PSEA stands for yeah yeah yeah. PSEA stands for Professional Sporting Clay <laughs> Association. So we're all professionals, you know. I I mean elite of the people who just carry themselves in an amazing way. And we're standing next to Corey, and Corey looks over at me, and it's me, Ron Berg, and G-Dub. And he goes, hey, man, he's got a bow in his hand. He goes, hey, man, you guys ever do this as a kid? <laughs> Straight up in the air. <laughs> oh, my God. And I grabbed G-Dub as we run. It was, you had, I don't even think you had your Ranger. I think you still had no, your I had a rental, I, No, I had a rental golf cart down there. We're, we ran to my, my buggy then. It yeah. had a metal roof on it and drug G Dub and sat in that thing as that arrow went <laughs> plummeting back to the ground. And I'm like, professionals. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We're, like, we're getting there. We're getting there. Baby God, steps. I got a lot of Corey stories. One, I can't do it because he still has the video footage. He won't ever release it. But we were at. Um, and I don't care if he li- he can get mad at me if he wants to. Everybody's been mad at me at least once in their life or once a month. Um, we're at the, some shoot in Texas, and I won't say the name in case it was a game law violation, but basically it's like Corey and Ant and me, and this guy shows up, and he's, he's tell you, like it's first big tournament. And he's like, oh, my God, you guys are, you know, whatever. And, oh, my God, it's Anthony, that's Corey, and stuff like that. He's like, oh, my God, I'm going to really learn something today. First station over the water, Corey takes out a freaking choke tube out of his gun, rings a shell, and shoots a turtle. <laughs> you know, and the guy's like, ah, you guys are pros. That sounds like Corey. <laughs> you, know, you guys are pros. <laughs> <laughs> of course, then again, I did bring a shell down at Cross Creek one time, and Leifer had never seen that one before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Leifer, watch. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, he still talks about that. Oh, he's, he's a very impressionable guy. So we're gonna we're moving on, we're trying to keep this actually interesting. I hope people think this is good. But um, I have to ask this question, and Skinner's heard it every time we've done a podcast. Everybody likes to vilify the NSCA, you know, kick it, kick it, kick it, whatever you want to do. But I always try to be a fair handshake on, the, you know, give a fair shake on this this deal. Can you tell me, and this is this is a basic question we ask everybody, tell me one thing the NSCA has done right and tell me something the NSCA has done wrong. Oh, um. Right? No, you can say well, what you want. I, I can say the one thing the NSCA does wrong because the NSCA is basically um, data, uh, data implement, you know, information keeping organization, record keeping organization, and somehow the only job that they have to keep records they managed to mess up, um, yeah. and they lost they lost all the information. Ten years worth. Like, Years worth. So they only had one job, which is to keep records, and they managed to mess that up. So I could say they. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, Everything beside before 2000 or 99 or something like that. So basically, you know, Jack. Like, well, we lost this category, or we lost. No, they lost it all. Well, I mean, it always pissed me off. They never kept track of our 100 straights. That's that. I mean, that's one of my bitches about the deal is like, you know, why wouldn't wow. you keep track of our one? You know, I mean, unless unless you have a one hundred straight in the, you know, obviously two thousands is just the fact that ought to have a column or some kind of you know we'll we'll send out a freaking patch for every possible all American team or concurrent or state or zone or district or county or cul de sac, but we can't keep a track of how many people's actually ran a course. You know, that, that's a bitch for me. That's a big bitch for me. So Yeah, I, I agree on that. And in sporting, in trap and ski, obviously, you know, the straights are, it, it's a it's a numbers game. It's a different thing. Perfection is achieved at every event. But 100 straight on a sporting place course is something to be proud of. 
Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a big it, one. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that. So, um, with that being said, I mean, what the NSCA has done well, I I think the championship tour is is one of their biggest successes. When we went zones to regionals, um, and then they they started to you know support and and kind of um, um, grow this championship tour, I I think it has turned into something that um, can be used for the future as long as we want. It's a circuit. Um, I feel like, you know, in every sport you have that that level or that circuit that you watch. In NASCAR, in, you know, the NFL, you, you know, season games, whatever it may be, or or even like kind of a March Madness thing. But there needs to be that, that circuit or, or, or that, you know, um, competition schedule that people can watch or attend. Um, I mean, and that's what we use to send people overseas with. So if it's good enough for that, then I, you know, I feel like it's doing its job. Yep. I'm with you. I mean, I mean, they, they do a good job of it on you know certain things, but you know, everybody, like I, I just want to kind of bring it out and, 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 you know, they are doing good. If we didn't have, if we didn't have the NSCA, you know, we had the USSCA before that, and it was in, you know, it was like the NSCA did help promote the sporting place. You know, it was it was it was not a thing here in the states until you know, till they kind of got in and started throwing money in it. So right. anyway, but I am going to I am putting stuff in here on the food on the road bracket game. And we're going to play um, back a game here in a little bit. But here, I want to ask you a question. This is this kind of hits you because you are a professional instructor. Can you tell me about instruction? There's always these debates on the social medias, all right, um, about what it takes to be a good instructor. And obviously, you can't throw shade at other people who are instructors because it's just it's just bad form it's bad policy to talk down but when people say hey you can be a not a very good shot or whatever not an accomplished shot but you still be a great instructor what do you say to that Des? um i think there there's not a, a perfect recipe for a good instructor I think a lot of it depends on what the client wants out of the lesson. What are they looking for when they come to shoot? If they're just recreational shooters and they want to have a good time, then you don't have to have a lot of an experience as an instructor. You're, you're, you know, you're on more basic levels of technique and, and method in the game. And at that, you know, level, I think, making sure the the student has a good time is is a, a high priority. It's not about drilling in the perfect technique. Um, it's about the enjoyment of the experience. Um, I think for someone who wants to be really competitive, you need a shooter, you need your instructor to have experience. Um, you, you can only teach out of a book to a certain level in anything that you do. Um, and, and I think, you know, when you're, you're at the higher levels or that's where you're looking to go, you need an instructor with more experience. That's not to say that, you know, they have to shoot a lot or they, you know, still currently shoot, but they had to have been there at least once. Well, that's, um, that, and that's the thing is, is, you know, what you, what your first part of what you just said, um, <sighs> Is it a coach or is it more of an instructor? Um, when you're talking about like yeah. your basic level <clears throat> of competency, and you know, like you know, like Skinner started with his dad, and he took some lessons, and, and you know, getting getting rolling here. Is that a coach or is that instructor at that level? Right. I mean, that's yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's a great um, just way to to delineate the two. Is are you looking for a coach or are you looking for an instructor? Um, 
an instructor is going to help you with little parts of your game, you know, sporadically as you take lessons or help you with a specific problem or, you know, an instructor is just going to be there to make sure that you have a good experience and it's fun and you enjoy it and you're safe, obviously, with shooting. I think a coach is more for, you know, someone who's looking to be more competitive. I, I think just those two, you know, words are a good way to delineate it. I think that's I think that's kind of one of those things that people don't um, delineate on it. Um, you know. Yeah, and it's like adults. I mean, people. I, I try and stay away from the internet and all of the the social media arguments. It's like you know, talking to a brick wall sometimes and banging your head against it and hoping for different results. Like, um, but it it really depends on what the client is looking for um you know if i i want to go play golf and i need to learn how to play golf i'm not going to go you know hire tiger woods to teach me to play golf because i i'm not there i don't that's not what i'm looking for i just need to know how to hold the golf club and hit the ball forward hopefully you know yeah i have to deal more than yeah well you know that's that's the that's the thing and that's the, the the issue you get these big debates because there are guys that don't know, um, you know, that there is another level out there, that there is another, there's a difference. Um, I don't know if um, some of these instructors know that there's a difference. I mean, I mean is that fair? Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes that's where the confusion comes into play, is there's just so many levels of, your participation in the sport that, you know, as the student per se may not know about that, or the instructor may not know about that. So they're just teaching to the level that they know, which right. isn't a bad thing. I mean, it, it, as long as everyone's safe and having a good time, I, I think instruction's great, but there's always, you know, they need as a good here, I will say this, a good instructor knows where they're at or is aware of, the levels that they're teaching or where the, you know, the student wants to go. So a good instructor, it's not necessarily about exactly what they're teaching. Sometimes it's just about the instructor being aware of those things. Yeah. Um, and, and, and like I said, Skinner can, cause like Skinner started, how long have you been going out at Skinner? Uh, I guess an SCA. Well, 2014, 2013, maybe. So, what was the Grand Prix, PTAS Grand Prix in South Florida? <clears throat> gotcha. So, I mean, you're not, uh, you've, you've gone, come in as someone who hasn't been taking it as serious as a lot of folks. But, um, but, you know, you're coming in, you came in as, is basically, did you have any background as a, um, shooter before i mean what was your what was your no, experience no i had you know I, my first shotgun was an 870 express 20 gauge and just shot some clays out in the field um and kind of started picking up shooting when i go down to visit dad in florida and knew i wanted a krieg off then and took some lessons and saved up some birthday money and bought me a krieg off dad said first time I bought my Krieg off that the uh, first big shoot I need to go to was the PTAS Grand Prix, and here I am. And you know what, Aaron, you have made it in the sport, and I would consider you a professional because you have your own ZZ field. That's right. It actually has. It's, it's, it's by the, the Aaron Romberg Foundation of Kids That Don't Think um, a Too Could. Kid, <laughs> okay, kids, kids, not kids. many people in this sport can say that. I think you made it. I don't know if that's professional or not. I just I, I, I want to help grow the sport, help grow shooting, um, and offer something, you know, help offer um, another discipline and something that's not in the Midwest. You know, that's, that's right. You know, like I said, and we're trying to get it because it's, it's, like I said, it, it's, you know, when we're talking about people running out of money and stuff like that, or like the, you know, um, I, I, you know, maybe less shots are going to be better. You know, where you're not throwing 40, 50 bucks on a, um, you know, a 40, 50, yeah, 40. You know, if shells keep going up, you know, maybe we'll find someplace guys won't spend this, um, have to spend as much ammo. I mean, the other thing is, you with us, for Romberg and I, 
we like the social part of it, and we also like the gambling. Right. So, but uh, <laughs> Campbell's. I mean, I mean, you and Pete, you, you and Pete, there's you no, should have saw it. Jesus, that was nuts. There's, there's, there's no gambling in FLC. There's no gambling in FLC. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to play this game. Moving on. So, stole this off the Dave Glover show, by the way, and we call this a sixteen gauge. And we started this game what, Skinner? I mean, this has been going on for three. It's been going on for a while. In it's, NFL it's been going on longer than three years. Yeah, it's been going on the kids for long. So, Desi, we used to play a game. And we just – it's a bracket game. And I explained this last show, but I'll explain it to you because um, you're a woman. And uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we just picked random shit. Just random shit. We did what? We've done drinks. We've done food. We did 80s movie actresses. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, and we pitted them against each other and we had a vote and we, it gets fun because you argue your shit. And, um, the first time we did this was, uh, I believe it was Neater on the phone. Um, the one that we, we recorded, uh, recently and we just yeah, did random neither. sporting clay shit. It really wasn't anything to do with just, just, I mean, it was like choke tubes versus, or, you know, common Peelous. choke, choke tubes versus peelers. You know, who wins? <laughs> you know, so, and we all like to eat. We all like to go out. So this episode of the 16 gauge is places we like to eat um, are uh, on the road. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we've tried to explain this. I think it works better on the radio or the radio, the podcast, explaining to everybody what actually we're doing here. Um, we asked for suggestions and people just can confuse, but it's the internet and they can't read um, <laughs> pictures. They should come shoot CZs. Yeah, right. Um, so basically we did places to eat. This is this is a 16 gauge. So we took 16 places that people actually, and you know, if you don't like the what we picked, then you should have responded. Um, Jimmy's Char House in Libertyville, Illinois. Uh, Eric Harvey said that one because no one wanted to buy him dinner at a nicer place. Um, <laughs> Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House because we've all eat, you know, eaten there. And Cracker Barrel, Brass Door, Carrollton, Illinois. Perry Steakhouse in San Antonio, Texas. Outback, because it's, you know, it's just like an old girlfriend you always get back together with on a lonely Saturday night. Whataburger. Um, <laughs> Desi, have you ever puked at a Whataburger? Because <laughs> 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 oh. you haven't lived until you projectile vomited at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning at a Whataburger. Uh, um just let happen. you know that it's in the Bible. Okay, I'll I'll have to put that on my bucket list. Yeah, In and Out Burger for the gays, uh, De Palos in New Jersey, Papa Do's, and I don't know. We all love Papa Do's. Bill Miller Bar, Bill Miller Barbecue, amazing iced tea. I like their chicken. Uh, Sandflies in Savannah, Georgia, uh, Kreiner's Diner in Alaska, Bucky's because everybody loves to eat at Bucky's. El Chorito Burrito in California, Nana's Taco Palace, and BJ's. Everybody loves BJ's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, that uh, that but is a collection. It is a collection. So here, let me let me let, let me figure this. Uh, let me find this out here. All right, here we go. So we're going to start this. We're going to do quick because there's three of us. This this should go pretty quick. Normally, we like to have four people with a fifth tiebreaker but because, you know, everybody's shorthanded. So right now, on our first pick, we have In-N-Out Burger versus Nona's Taco Palace in Houston, Texas. Nona's. Des? In-N-Out. Nona's wins. Oh. Papa Do's versus Perry's in San Antonio. Son of a bitch. Oh, that's a good matchup. That's a good matchup. I've never been to Perry's, so i got to go with Papa Do's. Man, I love me some Cajun Cajun food. i got to go Papa Do's, too. You know, at Nationals every year, we always do a big Perry's dinner. Um, a, you know, all of us, and it's turned into this huge group when we get a room. So, so there's a little bit of sentimentality with Perry. I know. I love, I, I, I love Perry's. I, I, and their lobster mac and cheese is the chronic, but I, I love me some crawfish a buffet, and I got to go with Papa Do's. I love Papa Do's because they, they got a good bisque. I turned you on to that a few years ago, didn't I, Skinner? 
Yes, sir. That's that's, that's a, like that, a tradition. We go to Texas. Well, let me see, because we don't fuck with tradition in FLC. So as soon as we normally get off the air, well, we get off the airplane, and if there's a Papa Do's, we eat it up Papa Do's. That's just how it is. Uh, All right, so we're going yeah. to DePaulo's versus Outback. Um, yep. DePaulo's. Yeah, yeah uh, that's no contest there. I, I agree. Yeah, or it's it's okay. So we go to Sandflies and Whataburger. I've never eaten Sandflies. I'm saying Whataburger. Sorry, Des. <laughs> Oh man, my sandflies! <laughs> my local sandflies gets booted out right out of the gate. Oh, oh, hang on, kids. We got a good yeah. one here. We've got Cracker, Ver- Cracker Barrel versus Bucky's. Oh, Bucky. well, I, that's the happiest place on earth, man. Bucky's. I was Look, gonna go Cracker Barrel, but it doesn't matter. Um, Gary Fitzgerald. Okay, Bucky's is good, good for any time of the day. I know. A uh, Jimmy's Char House versus Brass Door. Oh, brass I door. The Brass Door. No question about it. No question about Anything that one. The- <laughs> uh, I got Kreiner's Kr- Diner versus Bill Miller. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting voted out on that one. Uh, yeah, mm. you, you just lost that one. <laughs> okay, so for those those listeners who don't know, Kreiner's Diner is a little diner in Anchorage, Alaska. And if you ever find yourself up there in Anchorage, Alaska, you have to get uh, the Andy's Awesome Burger. It's basically a heart attack between two buns. And it is the best thing on planet Earth. All right, all right, all right. There, there's a, there's my a bucket list, glowing you? endorsement. I got one for you guys, and and I'm not going to say a word until you guys fight this one over. Waffle House versus BJ's. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to BJ's. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Waffle House. Uh, so I just have so, so many, many comments. That oh, I yeah. Have so many that. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really tried to curb myself. Uh, and I think this vote is, you know, it's kind of. Uh, See a, why this game's know. fun? Do you understand why we've been playing this game for a long time now? <laughs> well, I'm public here. This but, is a great game. Um, I, I'm I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with BJ's, guys. Waffle House. All right, we're here in the semifinals. Nana's, ta- Nana's Taco Taco Palace versus Papa Do's. Oh, shit. Oh, I've never eaten in Nana's, so i got to go Pop. I'll have to go with Papa Do's. All right, Papa Do's goes on. DePaulo's versus Whataburger. Whataburger. <laughs> oh, DePaulo's. <laughs> I gotta go to Paulo's. That's pretty good. It, you know, it's it's a good Italian joint. Imagine that, Bucky's. Oh my God! This is the this is the this is the uh, this is Rocky versus uh, Dr- uh, Ivan Dragunov. Uh, uh, Bucky's versus Brass Door. Oh <gasps> yeah. no! See, this is a great game. Uh, oh no! This is the worst matchup of my life. Uh, is uh, is Steve ever? Does Steve listen to this podcast? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he's got to play at the restaurant twenty four seven. It's all he listens. Okay, well, I, I want to be welcome at the Brass Store every day of my life, so I'm going to go Brass Store. Sorry, Bucky's. I know uh, we're breaking breaking tradition there. I'm, I'm going Brass Store. Yeah, Brass Store. Ooh, unanimous against Bucky's. That's saying <sighs> something. Brass door. That's saying something. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two Shots Podcast. We're looking here live at the Rumble in Greene County. We've got Bill Miller Barbecue versus <laughs> Waffle House, the white trash battle. <laughs> <laughs> in this corner. In this corner, weighing in at a healthy sweet tea, we've got Bill Miller coming in at an even 250 pounds. Fresh out of parole, scattered, covered, and smothered with tattoos. Waffle House. (laughs) I feel like this is like Mossberg versus Mossberg Pump versus, you know. (laughs) Yes, there's something. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I'm going to go go, uh, Waffle House. I'm going Waffle House. I mean. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, the Battle of the White Wait, Dragon. Which one is Waffle House? Is Waffle House the Mossberg? <laughs> I don't know, but this is. Oh my God! This is this is a semifinals. Papados versus the Palos. Papados. Oh man. Oh. oh my God. Yeah, I gotta say Papados. Sorry, Davalos. Ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention? We have Brass Door versus Waffle House. Brass Door. <laughs> no questions. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this is great. Waffle House was definitely the wild card in the bracket. Oh, my um, God. They made it a long way. I mean, <laughs> it's kind, of like, great... kind of like my 49ers. You know, they're sitting there. Um, uh, yeah, it'd it been a great Waffle House versus DePaulo's. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, the Cinderella story coming out. <laughs> the Cinderella story, yeah. Well, boys, gentlemen, ladies, this is it. It's all come down to these two. Papa Do's versus Brass Door. Oof. Oof. I'll let someone else go first on this one. Uh, can we have a tie? No. There is no ties. Oh, man. Uh, oh, this is tough. Brass <laughs> Yeah, brass door. Did you say Papa Doe, Skinner? No, I said brass door. All right, brass door wins it. So. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to FLC, it's not just about the shooting experience. It's also... About the fine dining. The uh, so here we got here we are, Desi. Um, so G Dub G Dub's idea, if you remember, Skinner, was to keep track right. of the winners, and then we have a battle of the winners. So right, right like now that. we ha- in the winners bracket we have Winchester and Brass Door. That combination is epic. I mean, right. I mean, we're going to end it's, up. It's going to grow too. It's going to grow. So we'll go to what? What do you think? We're going to go to top eight, maybe top four. I'd, top say, eight. I'd say, I'd say top eight. Top eight. God, dude, how awesome that'd be! Like a big brass door versus Beretta. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, shoelaces versus peelers. <clears throat> you know, Hampton Inn <laughs> versus you know Hampton Inn versus you know whatever your know, Diaspora. There you go. You got to do some hotel stuff. We did. Um, we did 1980s um, actresses. Jamie Lee Curtis won. I believe she did. Jamie really? Lee Curtis. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis versus Sigourney Weaver. Is that right? I think that was the final battle. Ooh, that's a tough. Yeah, that was that was, a, that was a, <clears throat> What did we go through? We, the, the Sarah was in on it, and she voted for Jamie Lee Curtis based on Halloween, and I voted for Jamie Lee Curtis because she showed her boobs in Trading Places. <laughs> you would. That, that that's that's how it panned out. Pretty much, and that, that, and that uh, Derek was sitting here, and Derek was like, "Why didn't we just record that?" On the podcast because it was it right. was a good one, man. I like that you added in the food though, because as a shooter who travels a lot, uh, you know, it's, dining it's, is a very big part of the travel experience. Well, I mean, oh, absolutely. you know, what what the next one when I get Zach on or Ricky Marshall, I try to have both of them and get them to fight. I want to do top sixteen <laughs> shooters. Of all times, so guys know oh, a little a bit. that's a great one for that. Yeah, guys know a little bit more about the history of, of of shooting in general, like trap and skeet and shit like that. And I don't want to get Marshall in here because he'll argue just as much as Zach does, and just watch him. And that's why I'll need like that's one reason I need Skinner in studio, and I need um, G Dub obviously running the fucking board because. <laughs> Christ, yeah. we're horrible at this shit. We are fucking bad. I'm just not good with technology. It scares me. Hey, we're an hour five into this, and we had, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of... Oh, I need to hit record. Stuff. Hang on. Can we do this again? I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> no, it's the green button, not the red button. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't hit the red button in a while. Uh, we, we, I had a good night. I had a good night, guys. This was fun. Um, but was this a good podcast? Did, I mean, was this funner than you've had in most? I 
I, I'm more relaxed now that, you know, this is my second one into it. So yeah, Skinner, yeah, you were a little nervous the first one. Dub didn't give a shit. You know, he, he like I like to add one more thing. <laughs> you know? What do you think, Des? Did you have fun, hon? I always have a good time talking about it with you. Uh, I uh, I was definitely apprehensive about getting on here. Obviously, you know because I have to I have to you know watch what I say. <laughs> um, Me too. And it's yeah yeah no you don't. <laughs> uh, you know I I think I loved it. I love that you asked me some questions um, about the female shooting that. You know, people are afraid to ask. Yeah, I think I mean, that's that's the main thing. Is like I said, we we're, we're like you know Skinner and I. Skinner's helped out a lot. It, it's fun. It's better to have him in the studio um, with me. And I, I mean, actually, G Dub's actually been a blast to help because he yeah. he's paying he's paying attention. That's the greatest thing about it. Is he's actually listening to what right. we're saying. And of course, he's fuck the little fucker. He's been around everybody. But hey, guys, well, we really appreciate you being here, Des. Um, Skinner, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm glad well, you got you over guys. the air, airborne herpes and and you beat that. But um, hopefully, Des, I get to see you this year because I think I'm I am setting targets at the North Central. All right. Um, and hopefully, I can get somebody to help with that while I'm gone that week. But um, you know, that's North the, Central is up in um, Northbrook. Northbrook so, this year. Yeah. So okay, um, great. We'll get up there, but um, but like I said, thanks for having you on the show. Thanks, again, Skinner. Well, we're gonna definitely have you in the studio when we get Zach and um, and Ricky Marshall in here to argue. Battle. Yeah, we'd love to be a part of that. All right. But anyway. no, I appreciate it, Gary, and uh, you know, thanks for including the the ladies in the sport. And I'm all for it. All now, right. uh, I wish I had a shot with me, but take one for me. <laughs>